This is KDK-12 calling KDK-1. for a scary movie. Happy Halloween and welcome back to Bentley House Minis. Today I'm going to show you how I built a diorama based on my favorite scary movie, The Shining. This is a collaboration with Darkest Raven Movie Minis, so make sure to go over and see what movie scene she created in her video after you watch this one. Our theme was scary movie, and we each gave each other a challenge material. The challenge material that Chantal gave to me is sand. So I ordered a nice big jar full of white sand for this project. I will let you know what my challenge to her was at the end of this video. So let's talk a little bit about my idea. And by the way, there will be spoilers, but The Shining came out in 1980, so... Sorry. <laughs> I'm a mom, so one of the most terrifying scenes to me takes place in the family quarters. Wendy, the mother, is asleep in bed while her son Danny goes into a trance and starts repeating red rum. He takes her lipstick, walks over to the door, and writes red rum across the center of it. He starts yelling, standing over her with a knife. She suddenly wakes up, sees the reflection of the word in the mirror, and realizes he's spelled out murder. So that's the scene I'm going to be recreating for you today, and it's going to be really important that I get that reflection right. So let's get started. As with a lot of my projects, I started out with a sketch. You'll notice I have some snow and some other items on there. I will discuss those a little bit later in the video. I'm going to borrow this vanity I've had in my collection for quite a while to try and figure out how this layout needs to be. I also have this old door and I'm going to use these two to figure out how I can get the best reflection of the door in the mirror. At this time, I'm also pulling out a few other items that I think will work. This table will hold up the TV that's seen in the background, and then I also need a bookshelf to go next to the door. After I have a reflection that I like, I can go ahead and trace around these items to get my basic floor plan. It's going to look a little wonky, but that's okay because in the end, I'm hoping this will look a little bit more like a dream than the actual room. Or maybe I should say a nightmare. I'm using cardboard as my main construction materials for both the base and the walls. I cut out long strips of cardboard that were about 8 inches tall. This is what I figure the ceiling height to be in that room. And then I start cutting them into pieces and going around the edges where my walls are going to be. The wall on the very left is going to have to have the door that eventually will say red rum. So I trace around a pre-existing door that I have and make sure it fits in the hole. This door was fairly close to the one that you can see in the movie, however I felt like I could get a bit more detail if I made my own door, so I decided to remove this one and just use the frame. I can save that door for something else. Here's the completed walls for the room, giving me the basic layout. And of course, before moving on, I need to test all of my furniture in place to make sure that everything still looks like it's supposed to look. One of the keys that I found working with cardboard is covering it with poster board. This is going to give you a much better finished look. If you paint straight onto cardboard, oftentimes it dimples and it doesn't really have a smooth effect. So I carefully went around and cut out poster board pieces that were the same size as my wall, oftentimes folding it over the corners so that I knew it would fit snug. I also then decided to mix a very 80s looking pink so that I could pre-paint the poster board. By painting it before I attach it to the cardboard, I really reduce the risk that my walls are going to warp. And also when I attach the poster board, I tend to use something like Fabrifix, which is an acetone-based glue instead of using a liquid-based glue. Once I have all the poster board glued down, I can cover any corners with lightweight spackling. I do this by putting it in a small plastic bag. I cut a very small opening on the corner and squeeze it into the corner of the room. I can then use a Q-tip to flatten it out, and this gives me a very smooth transition from one wall to the other. I try not to overdo this, it doesn't take very much at all. 
Now I can go back over it, paint it, and I have a very smooth wall finish. Wendy's vanity and the reflection in the mirror is going to be a key part of this diorama, so I have to make sure that I get it right. I have this vanity that I designed quite a while ago. It's not quite the right style I'm going for. I definitely need something that's a little bit more 70s or 80s inspired. And the one in the movie looks a little bit more like one of these yellowy wood grain type bedroom suits that were really popular around the time of this movie. So I'm going to adjust this vanity and make it a little bit taller, definitely adjust the shape of the mirror so that I have something that works a little bit more for this project. This is a pattern that I put together and designed on my laser cutter, and I don't have a pattern for you today, but I do hope this is something I can put in my store in the future, and of course, I will title it Wendy's Vanity. I'm also not going to bore you with all the steps of putting it together, but I am going to talk about the process of trying to get this mirror to work. I've had this mirror paper for a while and I've used it several times and every time I've glued it down and then someone commented I think it's a sticker and I had just never thought about that before and come to find out it is a sticker so I'm hoping that this will go on a little bit more smooth because in the past it's been very bumpy and the reflection just is not clear. So I added the sticker onto the place for the mirror and continued to build the vanity. mixed up the best mustardy yellow color I could come up with and decided to go ahead and paint the vanity. And mind you, at this point, I had still not tried out the mirror. This is how it came out. It won't be its final paint job, but in the meantime, I had also created this little vanity bench and wanted to paint them at the same time. I think these two will really complement each other. So foreshadowing, I'm sure you already realized that the fact that I said I hadn't tested it yet, now it's time to test how the mirror looks. And even though I didn't glue it on this time and I used the sticker, it is still a wobbly mess and you, it looks like it says no, it doesn't work. So we're going to have to go with a real mirror. I will turn this mirror over in a second so you're not as blinded, but this is an acrylic mirror. It's made of plastic, and for the first time ever, I tried cutting acrylic mirror with my laser cutter. It worked fairly well. It did kind of melt the edges, so it doesn't fit there perfectly, but it does fit. It also kind of made the edges a little jaggedy. I'm sure this can be fixed. I'd just never done it before, but I'm glad for this project it worked. I decided to go ahead and just glue it on top of the sticker paper because that sticker paper is down behind the vanity, the, the part that's built, and I didn't want to have to try and excavate it. So I sanded the surface and just glued it on. And now I'm going to try it out before I do anything else to this vanity. So here it is in the room, and it is so much clearer. You can see the word just like it needs to be seen. So now I can continue finishing up the vanity, one of the main pieces of furniture in this room. I started to drill the holes for the drawer handles, but then I realized I still needed to do that final wood grain type paint job. So I just mixed up a color that was slightly darker than the mustard yellow I put on before with a little bit more brown, and then used a brush that was kind of just had the bristles split a little bit and went very lightly over top of the original paint job. Then I added in sewing pins for the handles with a little circle of paper painted brown and upholstered the top of the vanity seat. This is one very similar to the one my grandmother had, so I thought it was fun to put a little of my own personal history into this room. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. 
Before I can add the furniture into the room, I definitely need some carpet. I'm going to be making a template using my post-it method where I just use post-its, go carefully around the corners, and then I can put that onto my fabric and cut it out. The great thing about this method is you can just add the post-its back onto the post-it pad afterwards and reuse them. Because this room was such an irregular shape, this was a great way to do that. Plus that little area where I didn't put carpet, you'll see why later in the video. Now on to the Vanity's co-star, the door. This door is made of several layers of mat board, and then I'm using some chipboard, which is a little bit thinner to create the panels that go inside of these holes. I also cut out some very thin rectangles that are going to go around the edges, and this is just going to give that little extra bit of detail that's going to match the door that's in the movie. I also cut out these little trim pieces that can go onto the door frame, and these are going to go around the door that's really going to make it that much more recognizable. When I added the door back into place, it was a little bit too short, but that's okay because there can be a gap at the bottom of the door, further making it seem like if you just pushed on it, it would open into another space. I also cut out a window that's going to go in this back area. In the movie, you cannot see what this window looks like because it is covered with drapes. However, I want this window to be where a bunch of snow is spilling into the room, and so I'm going to make it open and I'm going to have it reflect the window that's in the bathroom that Wendy pushes Danny out of in an attempt to save his life. So this is going to be a pretty simple window made of two rectangular panes on top of each other. To make it appear as if it is open, I just need to glue the lower pane a little bit higher up on the upper pane so that there is open space below it. Both the door and the window will get a coat of this butter yellow color, which was the closest I could come to what I saw in the movie. Once they're finished, I can go ahead and install them into the wall. I'm going to just slip the window into the front opening. It doesn't have to have a back because that's going to be covered. And before I glue in the door, I also made sure to paint the trim as well. In the sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep, a grown-up Danny does return to the Overlook Hotel and walks through its abandoned halls. The door is still chopped to bits and he can still read red rum across the center of it. And this scene is partially what inspired me to do an abandoned version of this room, showing that these events had already come to pass. And I just love aging things, so. Even if you've never seen The Shining, there's a good chance you've seen this door, or at least a reference to one of its most famous lines. Here's Johnny! <gasps> this door panel had been shredded to bits by Jack and his axe, so today I need to shred it to bits with my craft knife. This was a little bit of a tedious task trying to get through all those layers of mat board and chipboard, but once I was through, I think it gave an effective result, looking like the door was splintered even though it's not really made of wood. As I was concentrating really hard on copying Danny's handwriting, it made me realize how ingenious it was to have a child write this word because children often write their letters backwards and the way that the R and the D are backwards in this word really make it read well when it's in the reflection because M and U already can be read either way. I found this old metal doorknob that I had in my collection, and it's a really soft metal, so I was able to clip away at some of the decorative parts until I had something that I felt looked more like the doorknob in the movie. I do have a couple of items I decided to 3D print for this project. One of them I designed myself, and one of them I downloaded, so I will leave the link for that in the description. I did search online for a while to see if I could find a pre-made TV that would match the one that's in the background of this room. However, I couldn't find one that I liked or that printed very well, so I decided to make my own. I hope in the future to put this into my store, maybe in the next couple weeks. I know there's not really an antenna type apparatus on top of the TV in the example, but I thought it would be really fun to add an antenna because it would add a little bit more detail because there's not a lot in that back corner. I painted the entire thing black and then went over the screen in some shiny Mod Podge or glossy Mod Podge is the technical term to try and get the screen to look like it's made of glass. 
It didn't work as well as I wanted, so I do try something a little different in a bit. I painted the case of the TV brown and then was very careful to go over the details of the knobs and the speaker that's on the front of the television. It was at this point that I realized that the screen is actually gray when the television is off and not black, so I went over that and painted it gray. I made the antenna out of some old Christmas ornament hooks and I had pre-put holes into the 3D print file so I could simply slip them into place. I remember as a kid our antenna wires were just always all sorts of bent up. I used some diamond glaze that I had mentioned in a previous video to go over the front. It's still not perfect and I may do a couple more layers, but it does give the shiny effect I was looking for. Now I can go ahead and put the television in place. I decided to go ahead and glue the antenna down so I don't have to worry about messing with it. This table that I found in my collection was already kind of warped and falling apart at some of the joints, so I felt like this would be a good one to go ahead and put in the scene and I could really adjust it to what I needed. I cut off the sides of the table top and then I cut down the legs so that it was a little bit shorter. I felt like it was a bit too tall to have the TV in the right position. Thankfully, the easy cutter came in handy for this part. Once I was happy with the size of the table in relation to the space it goes into and the television, I could go ahead and paint it. At the same time, I decided to go ahead and paint the bookshelf. Previously it was black, but you can see that it's a brown bookshelf in the corner that has some books and Danny's toys on top of it. Now that those are both done and in place, I can go ahead and work on my second 3D printed item. I did not design this, but I will put a link to it in the description box below if you're interested in checking out the original designer and printing it for yourself. This came in so many different pieces and I don't think it was ever meant to be printed this small because some of the connectors were so small that my printer could not even print them. <laughs> I do realize that Danny is never seen on his big wheeler in the family room. However, I do want this scene to be more like a mixture of memories from the hotel. And so that's why I'm putting the big wheeler in place. It's pretty iconic as part of the Shining Scary Movie. But you may have noticed that my big wheeler does not have that back piece. So I'm going to be using some mat boards to cut out the shape and glue it straight onto the back. I do think that's probably the most noticeable part of the bike. There are some other parts that don't quite match up, such as the handle and the front of the bike, but I do think you see it mostly from the back. So now that that's done, I can give it a complete paint job with a black base coat. This is just going to cover up any of the white printer filament. And then I can start the big wheeler's final paint job. I'm going to go ahead and make this look abandoned, old, and aged because there's no point in me aging it after I put it in the scene. So far, the window, the door, the walls, all of those look like they're painted and brand new. But as I'm starting to paint these other pieces that are going to be set into the scene, I'm just going to start aging them as I create them. So that's the final look for Danny's Big Wheeler. I have one more item to make. It's not 3D printed. Actually, I found it in like a pile of free stuff and I'm surprised I found the lampshade and the lamp base because they were in two different piles. But I'm going to try and make this the lamp that sits on the vanity in the family room. It's not extremely similar, but I think it's close enough that I can do some adjustments like moving these little clear stickers and then also removing some of the fringe so that it will work in the scene it's things like the TV and the lamp that aren't completely iconic to this movie that I think I can have a little bit of leeway with. And as long as they're in their place, filling up the place, if it's not exactly perfect, this diorama should still read as a room out of The Shining. To further help transform this lampshade, I went over any of the gold areas with a neutral paint color and then I aged it. It does have a cord. I'm not quite sure if it actually functions, but I'll try it one day, but not today. Back to making things by hand, I really needed some cosmetic items to spread across Wendy's vanity. There's a pretty visible jewelry box in the center of the vanity. It is open in the movie. However, I'm going to be making a closed jewelry box just to keep things as simple as possible. I layered several pieces of mat board in a rectangular shape and I'm just going to be adding a strip of paper that goes all the way around to make it look like there is a lid on the box. 
Once that's done, I can cut it off and I'm going to add a little cylinder bead to the front to make it look like a clasp. This was the easiest, quickest way I could think of making a jewelry box, but I do think in the end it is pretty effective. Once all of that was dry, I could go ahead and paint it. I started out painting it gray, but then I changed to painting it more of a tan color. This is how it looks once it's finished. I do think it makes a pretty effective jewelry box. However, I am going to be covering things in snow in the future, so it didn't have to be too detailed. For the cosmetics, I found a couple things in my collection that I thought would work. One of them's a little lotion bottle and the other one's maybe some kind of dispenser. But I did need a few more things. So I took out my beads and just started gluing beads together. The cylinder beads were kind of the star of the show. I was able to make several things that look like lipsticks and mascara. I also was able to put a cylinder bead on top of a more round bead to make something that looked like fingernail polish. And then I used a ridged bead with just some paper cutouts on top that looks more like a little compact or something and I kept losing them so I had to put them in a safe place. And here's how they look once they're painted. I definitely had to make the red lipstick. I'm going to put those to the side for now and work on the bookshelf. I had some generic books that I had collected for this project because I knew I didn't want anything too specific on the shelf. I also had to pile up some papers as if they were papers that Jack had collected from his writings and stored in the family room so he could read them. I also added some of Danny's toys because you could see toys sitting on top of the shelf in the movie. And then I also added an old coffee cup on the top as if Jack had been drinking coffee and just left it there. So this is how the shelf is looking. I also added a bottle of Jack Daniels for Jack kind of hidden within the shelf. That's not where it ends up, but I was just trying to figure out where it would fit the best and kind of be out of the way. Now that the little bits and pieces are done, I need to finish up the room and so I need to make the drapes that are going over the area where the TV is sitting. This is going to shock some of you, but I didn't have any all brown material, so I was going to have to make something out of this brown material that has a pattern. I'm going to be following my own drape tutorial, which I will link in the description if you're interested in seeing something a little bit more detailed, but I'm mixing together water and glue. And in this case, I'm mixing in some brown paint because all of that is going to be soaked into this material to make the drapes. Might as well add the paint now so I don't have to worry about trying to make it more brown later on. I'm using a piece of cardboard covered in wax paper in order to lay the fabric on top of, and then I'm just going to scrunch it up as though there are natural folds in this material as they hang as drapes. This made quite a mess, so hold on while I go wash my hands, and then when I come back I can go ahead and pin my folds in place so that as it dries nothing will kind of accordion out and come out of the place where I wanted it to hold. Whenever you're doing pins on your fabric, just make sure that you're pinning it in areas that you won't see, such as in between the folds, because it does leave a hole. So here's how it's looking, all these beautiful folds, and I also had pre-messed up the bottom of the fabric, so I didn't have to worry about that at the end. Once it's dry, I can remove it from the wax paper. This does take a little bit of effort, and these are my completed drapes. Now, because I want one on each side of the window opening, I decided to go ahead and cut it down the center. And this just meant I didn't have to mess with two pieces of fabric, I could just mess with one. I'm going to put the cut side towards the wall and then add each side to either side of the window. I don't know if this was completely necessary, but I did realize there wasn't a bar for the drapes to hang on, so I just quickly painted a barbecue skewer and glued it onto the wall, and then glued the drapes on top of the skewer so it does make the appearance like there is a window rod above the window. I also decided to go ahead and cut a hole in the wall for that little plug that you saw on the lamp. Again, I don't really know if this actually works, but I think it would be cool if one day I could figure out a way to hook it up to something and test it out. So to make sure I still had that option, I made sure there was a hole where the plug could go through. 
On the outside of this project, I need to enclose everything because there's a hole in the wall and then there's also the window and I don't want you to be able to see the real world through those holes. So I'm going to be using some black mat board to go around the outside. I sped through that because it was a lot of just figuring out the right shape and gluing it down. I also left the back open still because I need to mess with putting snow in that window and I didn't want to close off my ability to reach the back of the project. So now that I have most of the things on my to-do list done, it was quite a long list, I need to age things, which um, is my absolute favorite, and I'm very excited. I've got my black and my brown paint ready to go. I removed everything from the inside of the project, and I mixed up some watered-down black acrylic paint and watered-down brown acrylic paint. However, I do end up using mostly the black paint. I did a lot of drips coming down from the upper part of the walls because in my mind I was thinking about the hotel as it was abandoned just getting a lot of snow and as the snow melts there's a lot of water damage coming in through the ceiling and the roof and the walls. And so that's why I had a lot of drips and also drips are just fun to create. I also used my finger to create what looks like some mold patches with the watered down paint and that works really well to fill in some spaces that look just a little bit too nice, bright, and pink. I used the same concept on the door, making sure that I get really good in that area where the door is supposed to be chopped up and uh, getting into the cracks and the details that I had made in the door itself. This really helps in a way to bring out the architecture when you can see that the paint has built up in these little details. And once the walls were done, I couldn't forget the furniture. This made me so nervous. I usually never get nervous with aging things. I just kind of go for it. But for some reason, this vanity I had paid so much attention to and had worked so hard on, I was really nervous about something popping out of place or warping. But I do think it turned out okay with the aging. I have to make sure and hit the bookshelf as well, the little vanity stool, and the TV. I had already painted the TV to look a little bit old, but of course you can never have too much aging. Uh, well, actually, yes you can, but um, I tried to find a good middle ground. I have a lovely collection of shining miniatures to show you. They were sent to me by Jolene from Tiny Keyhole Minis, and I will leave a link in the description. These were sent to me so long ago and really kind of inspired me to do sh something shining in the first place because I've always loved the shining and I don't know how Jolie knew that, but um, she sent me these awesome miniatures. This book opens up to say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And then the little pillow has the carpet pattern that's incredibly famous. And she also sent these beautifully framed photographs of the Grady twins and this photo of Jack at the party that you see at the end of the movie. She also created this custom news article over, and it says red rum at the top. Um, however, I don't have room to use this, so I'm going to have to save it for a reference in a future project. I do think I'm going to put the twins over the bookcase, and then I'm going to put the party photo over near the vanity. This is how they look once they're in place, and of course I had to age them into the project by making some water drips coming out from underneath the painting. I hope Jolene doesn't mind too much that I added a little aging onto the photos. And so now our room is sufficiently aged. One of the main reasons I needed to finish the outside of the project is because I plan to enclose the entire room in the hedge maze. The maze plays an important role in the movie, and it's even scarier in the book. The topiary scene is the first time I had ever slammed a book in fear. The maze is also where Danny's father, Jack, chases him through the snow with an axe. To further prove that the maze was that influential, in the movie Dr. Sleep, Danny is grown and every time something from his past comes back to haunt him, mentally he goes back to the maze, hides it in a box in the snow. So that's how I imagine this diorama, a terrifying room where terror happened, locked away in a frozen maze. So now it's time to make some hedges. Well, what is it you want? We want a shrubbery! Okay, okay, I know I'm going for spooky vibes, but I could not pass up a chance to do the shrubbery quote from Monty Python. 
So the next thing I want to do is work on the hedges. I do not have enough foliage material to cover the entire back of this project. However, I do have this green fabric from a long time ago, and they're pretty close to matching the shrubbery material that I have. So I decided to go ahead and cover this with the fabric, and it will give the project a more finished look without me having to cover everything in the foliage. So I just added some Mod Podge and then slowly started to push the fabric into the glue, allowing it to dry. I'm pretty proud of myself because I do have a tendency to ignore the outside of my dioramas and really only focus on the inside, but I do want to try and make this one 100% complete by the end of the video. Here's how the fabric looks once it's applied, and I still haven't added the snow, so I'm making sure that this back panel is still not attached, but I will be able to attach it once I'm done working with the window. So now it is time to actually make the foliage. I had these two different colors, however, I will tell you, I went ahead and just worked with the darker color as I felt like it was more within the tone of a dark and frozen hedge maze. This stuff was really clumped together, so I had to work pretty hard to get it out of the jar, and then I had to pull it apart into even smaller pieces to attach it to the mat board. I decided to do this with hot glue because tacky glue is just not going to set up fast enough for the speed at which I needed to create these hedge pieces. However, I knew with adding the snow on top of it, I would have another layer of gluing, I guess I should say. So I wasn't too worried about using hot glue to put the hedge pieces on. I just went around slowly making sure I covered up every piece of black mat board, and then I also added some more pieces that were coming down from the top. I want it to look like these walls are actually emerging from the hedges or the hedges are creating the illusion of the walls, and so having them come over the top of the walls is helping create that. I also wanted it to look like the hedges were encroaching in on the scene just a little bit at the bottom, so I added some triangles of mat board and then glued more of the foliage on top of that. I added a few other pieces of foliage around the room on top of furniture and at the edges of frames. So now it's time to test my snow technique that I want to try. I'm using some lightweight spackle from DAP, and I have used this before in a prop I made for my daughter's school play, and I thought it would make some really cool snow. So I just laid down some samples to try it out. I knew this stuff looked pretty good on its own, but if you remember, I have to use sand, and I do think adding sand will really help bring that glistening look that you want to see in snow. I did not want to have to cover this whole thing in glue, so my idea was if I used water on top of this and then sprinkled sand on top, that it would stick, and that did work. Plus, the water also kind of melted the spackle, so it gave it a more slopey look, which is something you want to see in snow. So I want there to be a lot of snow that's coming in through the window and kind of enveloping this back table that has the TV on top of it. I really did not want to fill that entire space with the lightweight spackle and have to wait for it to dry, so I'm using some aluminum foil to build up the areas that I know I want snow. I just want it to look like one big snow drift that's falling into the room. So here's how the foil looks before I add the snow. I hope you can kind of see the vision that I'm going with, but you'll really be able to see it after I add the spackle. I've used this stuff on a gingerbread house before, and I was really successful in using a disposable piping bag. So that's what I'm going to be using to get back in those really tight corners behind the TV and behind the table. This worked so incredibly well, and I'm so glad that my experience of using this on a gingerbread house, not a real one, you cannot eat this, um, a fake gingerbread house, really kind of made all of this come together. Once I had the snow in place, I could use a wet paintbrush to really smooth it out. Like I said, it kind of melts the snow together so you can get a really nice soft look to the snow. I made sure to get up under the table and to the side, making sure that the snow met through the sides of the table and there weren't any gaps where you could see the aluminum foil. I let that dry without adding any sand because that was kind of my first layer and my first test. After that, I added another layer and went all the way around adding more and more snow fluff. 
After I had wet the entire surface of the snow with a wet paintbrush with water, I used this little bead shovel tool to carefully add the sand on top. From then on, it was basically just repeating all these steps over and over again, adding the spackle, wetting it down with a paintbrush to make it smooth, and then sprinkling sand on top. There were a few items that I had to press into place. It was much easier to add the snow first and then push the TV down into the snow. I'm not sure if adding the glue to the bottom of the TV was really necessary because this spackle does tend to hold on to anything you put into it really, really well. Here's a better view of me laying down some of the spackling and then making sure I get into the little cracks and crevices. And I'm using that watery brush to go over the top, smoothing it out so it doesn't look like it was piped into place. Doing this also led me to a really good technique for adding snow on the edges of things. Once I had used my brush to pat some snow down, there were little bits left on the end, and I was able to just scrape that off onto some of my smaller details, like the edges of the frame, the edges of the coffee cup, or the toys and the books. And that really just gave it that light dusting of snow look. And these areas also still picked up the sand once I added it on top. So it was sticky enough to hold on to those little granules, and really the whole thing just starts looking really cool like it's encased in snow. I thought it would be really cool to have the Stephen King book still removable from the snow. So I added a large amount of spackle and started to smooth it into the existing snow. I added some foil around the miniature book and then I added sand on top of the spackle so hopefully the spackle wouldn't be too sticky once I put the book in place. I pressed the book into the wet spackle to make the indention, left that for just a couple seconds to make sure I liked how it looked, smoothed anything out, and removed the book again. Now it's time to work on the vanity and adding all these cosmetics into the snow. When adding snow to the top of the hedges, I found it much easier to use a palette knife and also I had run out of it in my piping bag, so this just kind of worked out. I had just enough to do the snow on the inside. And also just a note, if you do decide to try this technique, it will ruin your paintbrush, so use an old one that you don't care too much about. All those little fibers or whatever they are that's inside of the spackle gets inside of the bristles. But it does work really well to melt that snow into the hedges. And I'm just so happy with how the sand really gave it that glistening that you want on snow. It couldn't worked out more perfectly. I added some of the spackling around the outside window to make it look like snow had built up on the window panes, and then I was able to close up the back and add more of the foliage to the back of the project. Some of you may not know, but I like to add a lonely shoe into my projects as kind of a sign-off or signature to my miniatures. So I'm going to put this little smashed age sneaker kind of behind the vanity, peeking out, and I'm going to cover it in snow so it's not too much of an eyesore in the project. I really want it to kind of blend in. 
So here it is. If you know it's there, you know to look for it. There is a shoe in this project. And before I can call this all done, there's one last thing I needed to do. So now that it's done, I can show you the final spooky result. So that's all I have for you today. Make sure you check out Darkest Raven Movie Minis. The movie she chose is a little bit more on the comedic horror side, which of course I love those kinds of movies too. And the challenge I gave her was to use a tea bag, like the entire bag, the tea, the little mesh bag, the string, and the tag. So make sure you check it out. Her link is the first one in the description. I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Let me know what your favorite go-to scary movie is in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I feel like Morticia. Happy Halloween, and welcome back to Ben. You too, little. You can't handle a scary movie. I'll put my hand over your eyes. Yeah, yeah. The I think my shawl is making dust. So one of the most terrifying scenes to me personally, could you not reverse sneeze while I'm trying to do this? Ooh, 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 ooh. Something just fell on my roof. We can make each other feel safe. I will hide you so you are no longer scared.